enjoying making the Planet Pie series over the last couple of weeks. Uh, I did Jupiter a couple of weeks ago, last week was Pluto, and I thought this week I will make Venus. It is going to be a blood orange meringue pie, and I'll explain to you as I make the recipe and go along why I've chosen to do that recipe to represent Venus. To begin with though, we need to make our gluten-free pastry that I've used in the previous two pies. If you want to look in more detail at the recipe, go back and look at the Pluto pie that I made last week and I'll quickly go through it again in today's video as well. So to begin with, I've measured out 225 grams of gluten-free flour. I've also put a tablespoon of caster sugar in there as it's a sweet recipe and I've measured out 110 grams of cold butter that I've cubed as well. We're going to have to work quickly so I've also got my tablespoon of water and my egg out ready. I've got my greaseproof paper and cling film that I'll need and I've got my pie dish and rolling pin. So hopefully it should take about five minutes to get this pastry done and line the dish as well. So let's begin. Right, so quickly working use your fingers to scrunch the butter and flour together. Uh, I realised when I was editing the video from last week like how often I said you should work quickly with this pastry but I'm not lying, Like you really should work quickly, you don't want it to warm up too much um, you want to try and keep everything cold. And that's a normal rule for pastry but it, for gluten free pastry there's sort of a few things, like added extras that you kind of need to do in order to successfully line your pie dish. Anyway, so whilst I'm doing that and quickly working together, let me tell you about Venus. So Venus is the second planet from our sun in the solar system. It is the planet that is closest to Earth as well. It's also very similar sized. It is classed as a terrestrial planet. Uh, there are four in our solar system the four inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars, and that just means it has a rocky surface uh, surrounded by an atmosphere. So very similar to Earth in that sense. However, it is very different to Earth when we start looking at the planet. And that's one of the reasons why I've chosen the meringue pie recipe today. Uh, another reason, so when you look at pictures, it looks a bit more orangey than yellow, which is why I've chosen to do a blood orange meringue pie because I just thought the colour of a blood orange matched a bit more closely to Venus than lemon. Right, so um, mixtures resembling breadcrumbs now and uh, just make sure that you've got all the big lumps of butter uh, smushed in. That's a word right, isn't it? <laughs> um, excellent. Right, make a little bit of a well. Break our egg in. And add a tablespoon of cold water. Break the yolk up. Mix it in with our fingers. start to turn it into a ball of dough. So again, I'm going to repeat myself, I apologise, but work quickly. But try not to work the dough too much. Um, and That's generally a rule with gluten flour, and this is a gluten free flour so it's not the same. But it, uh, it does help if you just work quickly. Uh, it doesn't matter if there's little bits of butter left in the mixture slightly when you roll that out and then bake it it will make your pay, uh, pastry crumbly and flaky I think that's a little bit on the dry side so I'm just going to add a smidge more water again if you add too much water it goes quite sticky and makes gluten free flour or gluten free pastry quite difficult to work with one ball of gluten-free pastry. I'm such a stickler for like getting things off my fingers and trying not to waste because um, you want to use as much of it as possible. Right, 
leave your bowl to one side. You want to get your greasy food paper first, pastry on, and then cling film on top as well. Start to press this out. Start to roll it as well. So I've got my pie dish just to one side, just so I can get, keep an eye on the size of pastry that I'm going to need. So when you think you've got it roughly to a size, just start to measure it. So I need it to be a little bit bigger, so it will go up the side. pastry I honestly don't mind if you buy your own from the supermarket and roll it out or buy a ready-made pastry dish it's uh, that's fine um, I just get a real sense of satisfaction out of making my own so and also gluten-free gluten-free items in the supermarket are more expensive so just easy to make your own. Right, there we go. I think we've got that sorted. So we're gonna turn this over, peel off our greaseproof paper. And lift this up and use the cling film to lift it into our pastry dish. So I'm going to lift it again and just leave it over. There we go. Right. And just carefully. So lift, lift the pastry up and then use your finger to try and push it into the corner. Um, and if you just keep repeating, do it little by little and keep repeating it, you'll end up stretching the pastry to fit your shape without breaking the pastry up. So this if you're doing this with gluten free uh, not gluten free it like normal pastry you you can you are able to do this without the cling film and greaseproof paper um, and you can just break off a little bit of pastry to kind of help you push it into the corners without using your fingers too much. Um, but gluten-free pastries just can be quite difficult to handle and this is the only way i found that it actually works. So there we go, I think that'll do. Right, carefully peel the clean film off. And get a knife, which I have in the sink. Just go round it's um I put it in a spring form tin so I'm trying really careful not to push the base up uh, and ruin the pastry so there we go and we can just quickly neaten off neaten off the edges Press them down like this. Um, you're going to be covering this pie in a lot of meringue at the end, so don't worry if the edges are a bit uh, squiffy, if that's the word you want to use. Um, a bit rough because you can just cover them in meringue later, and nobody will be. Uh, nobody will know. Anyway, there we go. Right, 
last thing to do is to find a fork find a fork and then base so we're going to be blind baking our pastry uh, the, you do put this pie back in the oven later on to cook the meringue through but it's not hot enough or long enough to uh, cook this pastry properly so we're going to blind bake it first and then uh, fill it with our curd and meringue later on so we prick the base with the fork you want to line this with the grease proof paper fill it with baking beans and then put it in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes take the beans out and then put it back in the oven and cook for about five to ten minutes until you have a sort of golden biscuit brown pie base. Before I uh, bake the pastry, blind bake the pastry in the oven, I thought I'd just quickly do a little interlude here. It's completely unrelated to the Venus meringue pie recipe but I wanted to show you what I do with my leftover pastry that I have after I've lined the dish. Um, I don't throw this away, I just get uh, get my little tartlet sort of tin out, break these into balls of dough. Here I've probably got enough for about three. Roll them up and then just use my thumbs to squish them out um, into little cases and then I just put them in my tray like this. Like this is just leftover pastry, so it doesn't have to look neat or anything like that. Um, but I'd rather use it up and just make a quick snack um, that somebody can enjoy later on rather than throw it away. I mean, you've put all the effort into making the pastry, so you might as well enjoy all of it. So, and then I get my favorite jam, whichever, and then just put a teaspoon of jam in the middle. And it will heat up and level out in the dish, so you don't worry about flattening or anything like that. You don't want to put too much in, because it does bubble uh, and can boil over. Uh, and when you take this out of the oven, the jam will be molten and really hot and sticky so make sure you just put it somewhere to cool for five minutes until the jam is set again and then use a fish slice um, or a spoon or something to carefully take them out of the tray and put them somewhere to cool down and then enjoy them with a cup of tea later on. Right back to the pastry.